We are continuing on in Genesis because we're looking at the Hebrew worldview. And the worldview, a lot of that is picked up from Genesis. But it's also picked up from a lot of other places too. So we're looking at day six. This is the day that gets exciting for most of us because this is the day of the animals and the people and the dominion and <laughs> all that stuff. So let's start reading in there and uh, read it together so we get re-familiarized with what it says. Then God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds in the heavens and over the livestock and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God made man in his own image. In the image of God created him, male and female, he created them. Now here we have, let us make humankind, humanity. That always is a little curious for Christians because we want to have created beings and man didn't exist prior to 6,000 years ago and all that stuff. But that's not actually what the text says. It says, let us make humanity into our image. It's more like a transformation of something that exists into our image. And there's always two curious things to consider there. Who is us and what's the image? Well, this is part of the next section that we get to in culture, and that is the, you know, the belief structure. We're not going to get into that right now. But to be very simple about it, the uh, Hebrews thought of the supernatural realm as being populated by thousands, even millions of creatures. And uh, the throne is surrounded by four cherubs and surrounded them is seraphims and then in attendance at the council of God is at least 70 archangels. So when God said let us make man, he, they figure he's in, the, in council conferring with the archangels and he's not asking their opinion, he's just saying we're going to do this, we're going to make them like us. And then when it says in our image, our modern theologians say, you know, God is man, you know, man is God hungry, uh, he yearns for God, he has an emptiness that only God can fill, and it's the image, and, you know, and a lot of that stuff, but, you know, these people weren't born again. <laughs> these people didn't have an evangelist or city to go to. So what, what is the image? Well, in a very simplistic way, the Hebrews knew about celestial beings coming to earth, the Abraham had talked to them. They were angels. They didn't have wings. They looked like regular men in their 30s, early 40s. So when they said our image, uh, the image actually means a shadow or an outline. So in a very basic sense, the Hebrew would have thought uh, in terms of humans looking like the celestial beings. Two arms, two legs, trunk, head, you know, hair. <laughs> That's what they would have thought of. And they wouldn't have gotten any more esoteric and philosophical than that. They're very concrete people, remember? They're out in the, an arid area that concerned with feeding their sheep and goats and clothing their families and feeding their families. So they're very concrete oriented. So that's what uh, image and that stuff means to them. Now let's continue on reading because here's where it starts getting pretty functional. And God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the heavens, and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. And God said, Behold, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is on the face of all the earth, and every tree with seed in its fruit. You shall have them for food. So now we have instructions. Mankind is to have dominion over all the fish and the beasts and the creeping things, and they are to subdue the land. You know, the, everything is in, under, the, you know, under the thumb of the humans. And that's pretty much how we live today. And he also says that uh, all the plants are good for food. Yeah, apparently humans were originally designed to be vegetarian. Of course, that's only completely useful in the paradise that God made. So let's go on and finish this little section here and we're going to see what else God had to say. 
and to every beast of the earth and to every bird of the heavens and to every thing that creeps on the earth everything that has breath of life I have given every green plant food for food and it was so and God saw everything that he had made and behold it was very good and the evening and there was morning the sixth day so he concludes the sixth day with saying everything is good it's not just good it's very good that means it's not only functional it's highly functional all the plants the birds the environment and every scientist will tell you that you know if without man's intervention nature finds a balance and it finds a balance of predator and prey and plants and all that kind of stuff the scientists discovered this in a very real way out in the Yellowstone National Park when they didn't have very many predator wolves and over a few decades the entire environment fell apart uh, plants disappeared that used to be there animals that used to be there disappeared so they reintroduced the wolf and in a couple of more decades the entire landscape was restored back to its original balance God intended for all of the creatures to be in balance with one another so there you have it everything is in balance everything is good it's very good extraordinarily functional everything has a piece and a part to play and God said that's not only good that's just really 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 good <laughs> really functional so that's the end of the sixth day now it's kind of hard for sometimes for us to wrap our heads around the concept that very possibly there were humans upright critters you know uh, prior to Adam and Eve but the scientists will tell you that there was a remarkable change in humanity around 6,000 years ago and they call it the beginning of the modern human they aren't entirely certain how all that happened uh, scientists who study genetics say that somewhere along the line genetics remarkably changed so how much they don't know when it happened they don't know but they said somewhere between modern man and Neanderthal there was quite a difference in genetics so maybe the scientists aren't really quite so wrong about the antiquity of humankind and maybe Genesis doesn't contradict science at all <laughs> that is most likely the case because Genesis has to do with culture it has to do with how things function more so than how things were invented or created but if you can't wrap your head around it it doesn't really matter because in our hindsight we see the master and we see Jesus Christ as the great Savior and Messiah of the Hebrew people and the Gentiles got in according to events that happened in Acts so Jesus Christ is our master the same as he is for the Jewish people and we will follow him no matter what even if we're wrong he still loves us and if we're right good and if we're wrong so what?